All right, welcome back to Great Day Live. Uh, we're going to turn our focus right now to a serious topic, but one that we definitely think is, is worth bringing to you right here on Great Day Live because we feel like it affects a lot of people. We've talked about this a lot, people that are placing their loved ones in assisted living homes. It's an extension of your family, taking your family to a nursing home. Well, WHS 11 Focus Investigator John Charlton joins me now because this is such a serious topic, and, and the way that you kind of did the flip, the deep dive on this was discovering that registered sex offenders are living in the nursing homes, right? Like, yeah. how did this all come about? Well, I mean, registered sex offenders need care too. Right. I mean, they serve their time and, uh, you know, they get older, they need care too, and you can't deny them care. But mm -hmm. this was more of a story about should other residents, even staff, should they know, should they know and their, their loved ones, and they can make a decision on their own whether or not they want to put their loved one in that nursing home or even even if they do, at least they know who to look out for. I feel like this brings up so many issues of health privacy, my mm -hmm. personal privacy. How did you go about, about even digging into the story um, to find out that they were actually there? And, and then what rights do you have to actually ask somebody? Right, right? and there's no like, law in Kentucky nothing. or Indiana uh, requiring facilities to notify the residents uh, that there is a registered sex offender living there, but we did get a list of all the long-term care facilities in Kentucky and Indiana, and we basically just cross-referenced it with the mm. sex offender registry and violent offender registries. Verified of it that way. Yeah, so you, it was a long process of plugging in, um, you know, plugging in all these addresses into the system to see who pops up. Yeah. Kentucky wasn't, you know, hugely, uh, there weren't huge numbers here. It was about seven and six different facilities, but in Indiana, it was, we found more than 80 mm. in more than 30 facilities. And uh, so that was, that was quite shocking. So if, if I have a loved one in one of the homes, what are my rights to check things? And then can I go about checking the registry oh, yeah. myself? Yeah, this is public records. Yeah. So you can go online and um, basically just do the search yourself. But the problem is, is Nobody really thinks about no, that. You, no. I mean, everyone I've talked to with this story, including lawmakers, that lawmaker there yeah. from Indiana, um, and just friends. And it's like, uh, did, did you know this, um, that there could be a registered sex offender living? It doesn't cross your mind. Like no, you no, said, that you they're so entitled, many they, they serve their time. Right. They're entitled to the care. I guess it's the wanting to know. Right. right. You want to, to, to be armed with that information. And should you have the right? Should you yeah. have to go about should the onus be on yourself and your family to do this research or it's should a lot of legwork yeah and there's you know we found a few states actually do have laws that not only are facilities required to be notified from authorities that one is moving in there mm -hmm. or trying to move in there but then also uh you know notifying the residents and a lot of times you know you, you got to wonder if the staff even knows so if the staff doesn't know how do they not know to maybe keep a special eye uh -huh. on somebody and not leave that person alone but again these are people who serve their time um you know um but a lot of them have to be on for life yeah. on that registry. I, I've loved being able to kind of bring different reporters in to talk about different investigations, and I love what you all do. I guess that's the joy of, of having the focus team mm -hmm. is that you get to take a deep dive into this information and present it and make people aware, whereas that normally wouldn't get the treatment on just a regular newscast. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you, to have the focus team, I think a story like this is just so valuable. Yeah, and, and stories like this can lead to new change. laws and, and change, and that's what one of the Kentucky, uh, the senator I spoke with uh, from Kentucky is already looking into himself and then the other one, uh, Senator, State Senator Freeman in, um, in Indiana who's out of Indianapolis, he wasn't even aware of this. And Isn't that incredible? Yeah, and you he was, brought that to yeah, his attention. Yeah, and, and it's interesting because he's actually working on uh, a, a new law to prevent, to kind of close the hole, the loophole on people working at schools that are registered sex offenders that maybe are contract workers that the school doesn't even know because they're, they're not on, you know, at the public school system. No. So it, it's closing that loophole. And then he says, well, maybe we can look at language, you know, similar language for nursing homes because we did find that there were several people on the Indian, Indiana sex offender registry that actually have work addresses matching uh, long-term care facilities. Wow. <clears throat> so we know you're working on a follow-up to this. Can you yeah. tell us a little bit about this? Well, or does it have that, to do yeah, with the Yeah, it's more the, on that looking side. into into 
looking at uh, the ones that we found that have work addresses matching long-term care facilities, what kind of criminal background checks were done at those facilities, yeah. which facilities are, were in violation of not doing criminal background checks because apparently... Uh, it's required. Th it's required, but sometimes they don't do it. Right. So we're looking into that right wow. now. Wow, it's opened up a whole other discussion, yeah. right? How soon could we see that story out? Um, that's going to take a little legwork okay. too because we're going to need, um, we're gonna need some, some official documentation from from the federal government mm -hmm. on what's required in inspections and all that kind of stuff. Fascinating. So digging I mean, through that. We do so many stories on it, right? We, yeah. that we profile the, you know, getting into an assisted living or a senior living home and doing your homework. And I think yeah. it's just one more important piece that people want to be armed with. Right. They, they want to know what they can ask and what they can ask. And you know, long-term care facilities, they've been having a tough time, yeah. you know, during the pandemic and, you know, they all mean well, um, but perhaps s stories like this can maybe make things even yeah. better. Well, let's talk a little bit about you. I love, that's what we do on Great Day Live. It's kind of like, okay, fine, tell me about you now. Because I love like hearing about your background. I did not know this, that this is your second stint here yeah. in Louisville. Your wife is originally from here and that's what brought you back after several years away. Right, we were up in Connecticut for 11 years. Yeah. So, you know, John, you want to talk about winters? up there. <laughs> I feel like it, it doesn't get to spring until what, end of oh, May? Oh yeah, the long winters, yes. And <laughs> so uh, after a long day us. of work, coming home and snow blowing the driveway, uh -oh. two, three feet of snow, mm -hmm. adding another two more hours to your day is is, is pretty tough. Searching but. for Easter eggs in the snow, yeah. is that but common? But springs are beautiful. Everybody uh -oh. really appreciates them. So. Or always like people uh, in, in the Northeast or even the upper Midwest are like, but summer's great. <laughs> you know, yeah. They skip ahead and tell me how long summer lasts, yeah. right? Well, so, it's always good to have you back and yeah. you guys have that, that local connection. We can't ever let you all go. <laughs> like ever. Yeah, I hope my boss is here. That. I know. <laughs> we just appreciate that though. And I feel like our viewers, they want to know like the background and what brought you here. So thank you yeah, so absolutely. much for all that you're doing. Well, well, it's, it's, it's enjoyable. That's why I came back yeah. is for a position like this. So. Incredible. All right. Yeah. So you have to come back to Great Day Live when oh, you yeah. do your second story. Sure. Definitely. That's a promise. Definitely, I got you. We'll send you back up to look for Easter eggs in the snow, John. <laughs> All right. You can check out John's full story on sex, of sex offenders living in nursing homes and the follow up at whas11.com. It's also listed on our YouTube page. Thanks so much. Thanks.